Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. Some of you may have noticed that I've been a little MIA lately. I had to move from here to here and it was really crazy. But the good news is it allowed me to find this old relic. This is the book that got me into drawing, so I thought today it would be fun to try and redraw some of my favorite images from it. And some of them are pretty crazy. This book didn't age particularly well. I thought as a baseline it'd be good to start with one of the earliest and simplest of the drawings from the book. This is just called Basic Manga Girl. I basically just wanted to establish what kind of style I was going to do these redraws in and I thought a simple sort of like neck up face shot would be a good way to figure that out. Um, this one is actually one of the like least bad uh, drawings in the entire book. It's basically fine. It kind of looks like a Pokemon anime kind of early style retro stuff. Um, I I actually kind of like the fact that her hair is like sticking straight up, it's kind of cute. Um, but I would say that her hairline is a real problem. Figuring out the negative space around the face and the hairline is something that's really hard for any artist and it definitely didn't help that the how to draw book I was learning from clearly didn't really know how to deal with that either. I mean the eyes are so close to the um, hairline both on the top of the head as well as on the sides. Later in the video you're going to see the real like climax of this problem of understanding the head, hair, and face and how they are proportionally like adjusted to each other and it's pretty crazy but honestly this one isn't even that bad. Like when you look at the shape of her overall head it actually seems fine. I would say her ears seems a little bit low but um, other than that it's totally serviceable retro anime style. Um, I will say too that even when I bought this book this style was pretty out of date. Um, I think because a lot of Americans were getting older anime, like access to older anime much earlier than they were able to get access to like modern anime, um, it informed a lot of like early anime and manga fans to be sort of like lean towards a much older style of anime than was actually like current in Japan. Um, something kind of interesting about the differences between people who draw an anime style um, from different eras because obviously now uh, we have all these like simulcasts and stuff. Stuff, so we're seeing anime at the same time as it's being shown in Japan, but uh, yeah, back in the day it seems like it was really hard to get access to anything that wasn't pretty old. But I'm getting off topic. So basically I chose the style because I think this was the style that I was wanting to draw in as a kid. Um, basically I wanted to do a sort of more realistic mouth and nose closer to sort of like a Naruto style and then I wanted to have big shoujo anime eyes and relatively detailed hair. Now I'm going to move on to the first like real image that I remember actually trying to copy out of this book. This is the manga princess. The things that stand out about this image to me right off the bat is that she has shoulders like a linebacker and then no hips at all. And then her head is incredibly huge. Um, like her her skull underneath her hair is extremely mysterious to me. I don't understand why her buns start so far away from where her actual head must be unless <laughs> that's not hair and it actually is her head, um, in which case like, dang girl, you got a thick head. <laughs> but uh, I thought this was the coolest. I, I just really wanted to be able to draw this and I remember being so frustrated because I felt like I couldn't uh, like copy it well enough. Um, so the things that I want to try to do today with it are um, I want her hair to look more natural and more like the hairdo I think he was going for. I think they're supposed to be like braids that are coiled up into buns on the side of the head. Um, I'm gonna put them up a little higher not so like Princess Leia straight out just because I feel like it makes it look a little more realistic. Usually you have to have the gravity help your um, hair a little bit and not be right on the sides like that it would be better to have it sort of positioned over the top of your head so it's not pulling so hard um, and generally I just want her hair and clothes to look softer and more like the texture that they probably should be um, everything is very blocky and hard looking in this book um, and it is something that I really had to unlearn and learn how to draw like fabric that looks fabricy. Um, it's it took a lot of time honestly um, but I also really wanted to focus focus on the facial expressions of these characters and giving them character. A lot of these manga uh, girls in this book, and the guys honestly, um, have faces that are very blank. Like it's hard to tell um, sort of who they are or what they're really feeling because they just have all the same sort of like triangle happy smile and almost no like change in their eyebrows. 
Um, so it's really hard to understand what they might be thinking. I just really wanted to make them feel like characters who might have their own inner life. Um, I don't know how successful I was, but I, I did try. <laughs> um, and I thought that this dress was probably supposed to be sort of like more poofy and um, classical looking. Fortunately for me, I had just watched a movie that was set in the 1700s in France, so I just used the dress that they were um, using in that movie as sort of the silhouette of that, and then I copied the colors in a more desaturated color palette for the dress. Honestly, I think she turned out really cute, and I think that my past self would be super impressed that I'm able to draw this, which is fun to go back and sort of remember how hard things used to be, um, to sort of appreciate where you're at now and that kind of thing. I really, really, really remember clearly how frustrating it was to not be able to draw what you wanted, um, and it really makes me happy that I stuck with it and kept going. All that mushy stuff aside, I'm also just glad I was able to give this poor girl some hips because she was severely lacking before. Um, I don't know where that skirt is going, but it's like there's there's nothing there. She has no pelvis. There's, there's really no way for her um, proportions to be balanced like that. So um, I also just tried to generally do some like nice shading and sort of sculpt out her face a little bit. Um, there's definitely an attempt there at the original one. Um, you can see these sort of shade lines on the sides of her face and underneath her eyes, um, but they're pretty faint and they also don't seem to tell you much about her and she doesn't have any blush which is really strange for an anime girl so i made sure to give her some nice cute blush and just some very soft shading in a few other places and now for the illustration that inspired this whole video All around me are familiar faces this girl is um, maybe my favorite image in this entire book, and I think even when I first got this book, I thought to myself, man, her hair looks just a little too big. Um, but now that I'm looking at it now uh, as someone who's been drawing for a lot longer, it is super, super funny to me. Um, the fact that in the how to draw section of this, they actually show how far away the end of her pigtail is from her skull um, is really funny because it's just like, it doesn't make any sense like there's no way that her hair could be doing this even within the realm of manga which allows for such things as you know Yu-Gi-Oh characters and stuff like that it's just it, it's even broken past those laws so in that way it's really impressive um this was in the section where he was trying to show like movement and sort of like very dynamic stuff um and I think that other than her, the fact that she has hot dog legs um, and she's sort of like tilted in the air, I think that this pose is still very, very stiff. So I really wanted to show some more like force and impact um, on this character and just try to give her a little bit more of that feeling of like something big happening. Her outfit here is honestly one of the most boring outfits I've ever seen. It's so clearly just an outfit of like what would be the easiest thing to draw. That's why her um, sweater is super tight at the waist and super baggy at the arms because arms are hard to draw the shape of. And um, her skirt is just, I mean, her clothes look like they're all made out of vinyl or rubber or something, the way that they're shaded. And um, the fact that her legs don't have a bottom to them just really leads me to believe that like drawing limbs is, is hard, which I, I know is true. Um, but it's really important when you're drawing a pose like this that you don't just like completely lop off parts of the character to make it easier to draw because it just makes it look really weird. Um, but this is definitely something I used to do all the time when I was younger. I would be like frustrated with something I was drawing and I would just not draw it. Um, a lot of the times my characters would have crossed arms and so I'd tuck both of their hands like somewhere in their tangle of arms so that I wouldn't have to draw either hand. Um, I honestly think it's something that all artists can kind of identify with at one stage of their um, careers or uh, experiences. It's just, it's completely universal. <laughs> um, I changed up her outfit completely because yeah, I just didn't think that 
it was a crucial part of this illustration. And of course, I kept her pigtails because they're very iconic, but um, I scaled them down quite a bit. I actually love characters where hair is like their sort of thing, their big um, signature point of their character design, but I just don't think it's really adding anything. And I also think it's weird that she has all this hair and none of it is being affected by the way that she's jumping. Like, why would you make the hair so prominent and then not actually have it sort of flow in the um, angle of which the movement is happening. Like we even have speed lines showing that she's jumping backwards and her pigtails are both just completely akimbo as if she's standing perfectly still. And of course that she'd been doused with a bucket of hairspray. <laughs> Honestly, as much as I'm being hard on the art in this um, book, I'm still incredibly nostalgic for it and really grateful to the fact that it even exists because it is the thing that got me into drawing. I honestly don't know if I would have ever uh, discovered my love of drawing if I hadn't randomly picked up this book on a road trip and started doodling and trying to follow the um, how to draw instructions. And while I don't think it's the best book for learning how to draw, I'm still really, really glad it exists. Um, and now it's, you know, providing a lot of entertainment to me just because it's so weird looking in some spots but yeah um if you guys ever want to uh do this as well please um like tag me on instagram or twitter like going back through old how to draw books you used to really try to emulate um i think it's really fun and uh, especially when they're super old like this one uh, it can be really funny as well <laughs> Thank you to all of my patrons, including Bald Headed Potato, <laughs> Bella Story, Best Kaiju, Braggy, Combo Pon, Lion, Clockwork Construct, Joe, Dr. Casket, Alaria Louie, Greer the Animator, Griffix, Hachiubi, Ice Cream Pal, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Blah 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 Blah, Marina Costa, Micah Dactyl, Mr. Dr. Pence, Nicolette Queen, uh, Nora Cornelson, Ruin Rain Crow, Some Mediocre Artists, The Artsy Moose, Throat Foam, XAM, and Yo Boy ST.